then I'm going to add a few things to it. <coughs> Go ahead and put your heel up here. Again, the heel lift gets it perfect at the angle that you want for the taping technique. It cannot be done in terminal extension. If I were to do a hyper extension, I'd need to bring it the, that much more forward. It's got to be that much more. And I would tell you the only thing different with a hyper extension versus a diamond X is there's one X. And the X is posterior. So you would take either your medial X or your lateral X, whichever it is, and it would go posteriorly. Increased flex, uh, knee flexion, 1x, lace it up, and that's the knee hyperextension. Okay. And what do you lace up to? It's the same. It's exactly the same as a Diamond X knee tape. So you're going to go over the knee? It's exactly the same. Okay? Right. So with this, again, we're going to get some skin, show me some leg, mm -hmm. clean okay, shave and spray. Uh, again, I want you to say this. We're going to use, this is where this is nice, the 2 and 3 quarter inch power flex. Um, with this, they say you don't need to shave and you don't need to spray. I still want you to at least make that description so we know that what we're at. The biggest mistake most students make is they don't do long levers. And I don't care how you see it, this is how you will do it for me, as long levers. So what I do is I usually take my thumb, put it at the midpoint of the patella, and I go up, and I need to go at least that long, and at least that long down. Uh, what you really should look for on the gastroc is where the calf starts to narrow back down. You need to be right at that point for your base anchor. Okay? If you go below it, you're going to cramp the calf. Um, and so what, what sometimes happens is they have a real short bottom and a super long top. So it's got to be equal distance above and below and the midpoint of the patella is approximately at the joint line. It's a little bit above, depending on where the patella is. This position actually is, is about two inches above at the midpoint of the patella. So just get in the region, okay? Clean shave spray. You need to say put heel and lace pads in the popliteal fossa. With the taping, uh, as you do the figure of eight with the elastic tape, it pinches really big there. And so you, you need to make sure that those are there. This is where I like this because it's just so much quicker and easier. I'm going to take my uh, two and three quarter inch power flex. And I always start at the bottom and I work all the way up. Try and make sure you don't have any gaps in the process. It's going to take you on a typical leg. Are you going to get one on top? It's going on the internet. Uh, again, folks, being real smart on hand placement, you know, you're not frisking up shorts. And uh, I've seen football players that think they're really cool, and they'll come in with shorts and nothing else and think it's pretty cute. So <laughs> out the door until they come back appropriately dressed and apologize to whoever it is that they're showing disrespect to. That's happened more than once. So, um, a football player showing multiple opportunities to not show respect? Um, what I will do for you guys on the test is that the special adaptations to this technique, you're actually going to be able to use the three inch elastic tape. I'm going to show you how you would do this from start to finish with the real tape, and then you will make the adaptations with regular tape, and then on the test, there are pieces that I'll allow you to use three inch elastic on because you just can't replicate it differently. So again, clean shave spray, heel and lace pads, knee at about a five to ten degree flex position. Got to get a little bit of hair. <laughs> just I like how Will's always a dummy. What's that? <laughs> it just makes sense. I used to often let the athlete cut for me until I got my finger cut. So uh, athletes don't do that. I, and I got... Uh, student athletic trainers used to help as I was doing game day, and that didn't work either. So uh, I always cut my own. If I've had my wheeze, I'll rip it. And you get going on game day, and you can feel you good, and you know, then you can you can actually rip it. And it, it's with athletes, man, you got your game face on, it's ready to go. Uh, I always start with my medial X because that's what we're most worried about is medial displacement. Lateral is not a big issue for us, medial is. 
So with my three inch anchor on top, my three inch anchor on the base, finding the medial superior patellar border, I'm gonna take my elastic tape and I guess let me stop and explain a couple things here. When you look at how this is done in the book, you're gonna see as many variations to it as there are athletic trainers. So is it, so I happen to go from top to bottom. Some people go from bottom to top. Some people do the first strip as the inferior medial patellar border. I do the first strip as the superior medial patellar border. The moral of the story, it doesn't matter because it's all, when it finishes, is going to accomplish the same thing. What does matter is that you do the medial aspect first because that's our focal point, okay? So um, where I do this, I, if you notice what I just did, I, I got a good secure anchor on top, and then I just let the tape go where it wants. I pulled it so there's almost no elasticity left in the product. I've stretched it very clearly. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll have the athlete just reach down and hold there as well just to give them a little, and then again, look at my, I, I'm right on the border of my patella. I'm not over my patella. I'm not on top of it. I'd be causing a patellar grind, right? I am right on that medial inferior border of the patella. And with the three inch elasticon, um, I just let the ends go where they want to go. The key is, is that I have a broad Xing pattern rather than a tall Xing pattern. That makes sense? It's got to be broad, a flat X rather than a tall. And then I'm going to go from there. I will probably mm -hmm. use five strips of the three inch elastic to stabilize the medial aspect of my knee. When you do this with tape, you're going to do three anchors on top with your white tape, three anchors on the bottom, three strips that way, three strips that way, and three straight strips. But when you do it on a real patient, you're going to use probably four to five, six, maybe different strips of the three-inch elastic. Depending on the leg size, and Jared's leg versus your leg is going to be a lot different. In fact, on a smaller leg, I probably wouldn't use the three-inch. I'd probably use the two-inch. Okay? So again, just make the adjustments based on what you're doing. So then my objective from here is to spread it out, is to fan it out and fill in my gaps. So we're going to go, again, look at the tension I'm putting on that. I'm just nice and smooth and taking full tension. Okay, so I used almost a full roll of tape there. I get, my, I'm just going to, for teaching purposes, throw this on as my last strip. Um, $3.80 I just used just on this one roll of tape. That's why this is not something you're doing two every day. It's, it's, or if you are, you got to have a pretty good budget. So if this was about six inches longer, then it would be a straight strip. And the nice thing about this is the red line in the center should be right at the point where the medial flatter ligament is. Okay. So again, this is all the way from anchor to anchor. You've got to visualize that for me. It's the full length. Um, so I've got a nice closed up. My first two strips were real broad and flat, and then I filled in the gaps. Medial X. Now let's do lateral X. Some sources you'll see do it this way. Where they'll start and they'll go with that. Everybody see where I'm at? I just did the same thing. And then they'll go like that. So I did my superior medial patellar border and my inferior lateral patellar border. And then they'll go opposite. Superior lateral patellar border inferior medial patellar border and then they fill it in so again it's just another way to do it um, I've seen some where they'll take and they'll start here two three four five and then they'll start here and they'll go one two three four five okay so again what what I said a few minutes ago it doesn't matter the key is, is, do I have a full diamond X on each side of the knee that's going to look like this nice, broad, flat X pattern, right? Um, I would say, I would say, well, yeah, I, 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 that's, that's what the moral of the story is. Let's just leave it at that, okay? Are we all right with that?
Understand? So when it comes to the test, do I really care that you do this one first or that one first? Well, probably not. I care that you do the medial aspect first. That's what I care about. Okay? <clears throat> so then, uh, you know, from the lateral, this one, it seems like from the lateral, for some reason, I always like to start at the bottom and go up. Uh, this makes the athlete pretty nervous. <laughs> not necessarily they're still male they just don't have a penis it was, I, mean, I was being facetious <laughs> I started this it's my fault I'm sorry I blew it it's going to be a viral video <laughs> what's your name again and then we can put it on the Ralph. Ralph Martin. Okay. My name's Rebecca. <laughs> no. Ralph. Ralph Bartowski. <laughs> College? Just like one of my favorite terms is lingus membranus. I'm anatomy, when you didn't know the answer in my class, you just wrote lingus membranus and you got partial credit if you spelled it right. Oh, is that an actual really? thing? Oh, okay. I'd have that down. <laughs> There's a word I'll spell right. Again, so I'll see my medial X, my lateral X. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my two-inch light plast. You don't want to use two-inch elastic on it. It'd be so thick and bulky, you're going to use your light plast. What you're going to be able to do in class is simulate the light plast with the power flex. Mm -hmm. So again, it makes it real realistic. It just makes it a lot easier for you. You're going to use this, and again, you're just going to start out on a spiral pattern, and you're going to go with little or no tension down there. You're just laying it on around the gas jock, and again, one of the things that people make a mistake is this sticks out, and if you don't, when you get up here, smooth it in, and you just wrinkle it over. So just smooth it in like that. Once I get just over the tip tube, then I'm going to go right on up. Oh, no, let's do a figure of eight. And let that go. And let's <coughs> Oh, no. Oh, no. Is there a reason for the figure eight? Just to get, uh, the figure eight is a little bit of extra posterior restraint, a check kind of form. That it just does a little different angle, so it's a, it's a way just to give you a little bit more support. What's the purpose of hiring? Cost effectiveness. Yeah. 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 We're at a college. We don't have to uh, Patient that. comfort. This is not high school. Patient what conformity. Anchors. Yeah. Uh, division. Light plast is a taping base. It is not a mm. taping Somebody support. Somebody uses diamond points. There's a big difference there. Please. A taping base for a taping versus a <coughs> taping support. Light class doesn't have the tensile strength that allows you to use it to provide support. It just is a base. Okay? That, that's, the, that's its design. It's the properties of it design. What I see is sometimes people use it a little bit differently. It's not a big deal, but as long as it's a lot more flexible. Then this. That's what your final diamond X should look like. Mm -hmm. If it's 